I'm Ryan Stevens from the Racing with Ryan podcast. And I'm Tom Stout with Speedway Video. And this is episode two of Do a Burnout, where I'm going to flip the roles and interview Tom today. So we're going to get to know Tom a little bit better. And uh, he's going to try my lineup of sauces, a couple of which I made myself. So Tom, right. you're in for a ride. Yeah, I can't wait to try these. And uh, from the ones we tried last time, and from these, we're going to pick our lineup. Ready to get into it? I, you know, I'm ready. I've got my cool down lap. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm expecting to get a little more fried than last time. Well, we'll find out about that. <laughs> yes. So I'll tell you, my palate a little bit different from your palate. Yeah. So you're in for a bit of a different ride today, I think. So <laughs> I think so. Let's, let's get into it. Let's do it. So, this first sauce I have, as you can tell, this is uh, one of the ones that I made myself. Yes, well, um, green, of course, is always a good way to start, Ryan. I'm, I'm glad you did that. So, <laughs> um, this is my personal uh, first edition batch of the Hot Lab Green Flag okay. Sweet Jalapeno Sauce. So, Ooh, this, uh, all right. very simple ingredients, just jalapenos, lemon, sugar, salt, and vinegar. I've got green flag, I've got the caution flag, and I got the red flag. And this so, sounds even more like a margarita than the one that I told you was like a margarita. <laughs> yeah, you know, everything but the tequila. Mmm. You said this was sweet jalapeno. I get jalapeno right away, mm -hmm. and it's sweet. This is yummy, man. Mm. It's not bad, right? Yeah, and it, it has exactly what you want from a great jalapeno. Oh, man. It is really yummy. Yeah. And just, just a just a, an, an inviting little tingle. Yeah. You know? Just not enough even... to let you know it's a hot sauce. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it. All right, Tom. So, green flag is out. Given that you're our videographer at the New Smyrna Speedway, it's such a movie aficionado, where did your love of the film industry stem from? Okay. So, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be honest with this story. I do feel like I probably would have eventually come around to filmmaking anyway because I just, I so naturally uh, enjoy it. But the true story is that I just liked movies casually, didn't even think about them all that critically until my parents got an HBO Cinemax subscription. If you've already guessed where the story is going, <laughs> good, good on ya. So, Tom, in his 10th grade year, would stay up a little late and, yes, and we all did. Yeah, and just, just see see what I could see on on good old Skinamax. <laughs> and one night they were playing a movie, Paul Thomas Anderson's Boogie Nights. It had just come on. It must have been HBO because it had just come on HBO uh, in more ways than one. <laughs> then uh, <laughs> after after being in theaters in 1997, and of course I thought from the description that it was a certain kind of thing. And I'm watching it, and I'm like, this is the greatest movie I've ever seen. And there's so much else going on here. It's still one of my very favorite movies, and I am just blown away every single time I watch it. It's one of those movies that I just have, you know, completely memorized. Every line, every shot, every feeling that it gives you. Uh, it's, it's a movie that works on so many different levels, and it really, from that accidental discovery, uh, it, it really germinated my love of film, and from that point on, I didn't stop looking for the Skinamax movies, because who, whoever <laughs> does, but I started looking for more interesting stuff, and, and that's, you know, really where the discovery came from. It's usually what you find in childhood that keeps you going throughout the rest of your life. Yeah. So it's, it's like they say in the racing world, get your kids into it early. Oh, and sure. They'll love it forever. I don't think we're going to ramp up the spice meter too much, but this sauce has a story. This is the Bucky's Sweet and Spicy Ghost Pepper Hot Sauce. When I went to Richmond a couple of weeks ago, we stopped at Bucky's several times. Peyton loves the little Bucky guy. Yeah. And um, I, I looked, they had a little hot sauce display. I said, to hell with it, I need sauces for this thing we're gonna do. So I picked one that sounded interesting. I'm a sweet tooth, so yeah. I tend to go more the sweeter direction. Um, this one just has red peppers, ghost pepper powder, fresh garlic and sugar. So again, another pretty simple sauce here. It's very sweet. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes the, the quality of the bite you get um, and what you're eating it with changes. Oh no, there's, okay. I was about to say it's not as spicy as the, as your green flag, but it's coming, it's coming in a little bit more. No, I mean, it's, you know, it's not bad. It reminds me of my favorite sauce from Tijuana Flats. Okay. So that's kind of why it, 
definitely qualified. So with that said, um, you went to Full Sail University uh -oh. for your education. <laughs> and uh, we've been friends for a long time. And uh, you mentioned several times your disdain for your time there. So if there were no life barriers, money wasn't an obstacle, if you could just go to any university or anywhere to study and do it over again, where would you go? Uh, it's, it's a good question. And the answer is, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, as it, good as an answer as anywhere. Segues nicely from the last question because Paul Thomas Anderson famously or infamously dropped out of NYU, which is one of the best film schools in the country. Spike Lee teaches there. And Paul Thomas Anderson was like, I could take this money that I'm paying to go to film school with and just go make a movie. And, you know, circumstances are different for everybody. He was in a completely different circumstance than, than I'm in. Or, or was in, but I, if I had been in a similar circumstance, I could have taken that tuition money and made a film. Would it have ended up very good? Probably not, because, you know, looking back, even though I thought I was amazing at the time, as we all do when we're like 20, 21, sure. uh, you know, I look back and I'm like, okay, the movie probably wouldn't have turned out that well, but at least I would have been trying to bust down a barrier. Knowing what I know now, looking back, that's what I would have wanted to try to see if something would have stuck. So do, would you say that, with that said, that you're more of a hands-on learner? Like, you just like to dive in and do it and learn as you go? Ah, uh, ooh, you know, I've never thought of it that way before. I suppose what I got from what Full Sail was at the time, and we're talking two decades ago yes, at this it's point. it's changed a lot. I must, it's, I can tell you from experience yeah, it's changed a and lot. and even just visiting the campus here and there for different reasons, I can see that it's changed a lot. Even when I went, people were telling me, oh, you'll see this website, fullsalesucks.com. Mm -hmm. It's different now. So it's clearly a school that's been in, in a state Listen, of flux for a long time. If somewhere doesn't have a sucks website, then <laughs> it ain't doing it right. <laughs> you know, that's, that's how I choose to take all of the negative YouTube comments. I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, I must be doing something right. right. right if somebody feels strongly enough to, to diss it. If there was anything that I actually learned there, it was the importance of being humble because you you can't, and if I'm really being honest, I didn't learn this at Full Sail. I learned it after the fact when I reflected upon what I learned at Full Sail because there was a screenwriting class that I was like, this is the most bullshit class because they're not <laughs> teaching us how to write great films. They're teaching us how to write Disney movies of the week. But now looking back, I understand that it's not actually, there's a formula to it, but it's not actually that easy to write Disney's mo Disney movie of the week. It's a different skill set, and it plays by the rules a bit more, and you can't break the rules until you learn them. So I, I wish I had appreciated that more at the time, but for the most part, I can look back even 20 years later and say that most of my education there was stuff that I had already learned from watching DVD special features. Oh, well. Really knowing now what my interests are and have been if I was able to actually like really identify for myself what the right path would have been and I really mean this stuntman I, I don't know I don't know if anybody's actually gonna believe that but I genuinely feel like that actually would have been a, a path to success for me that really is tailored like my interest in wrestling my interest in film something I feel like I can actually do and be good at stuntman Speaking of how the vessel for the sauce can change what uh, what the sauce is like, this is the, I, I promise, this is the only time I'm going to mention it. I'm only doing it for my own purposes. I am flexitarian, and while everybody's rolling their eyes at that word, I didn't pick the word. I just discovered that that's what fits, and it means that I do my best to be vegan, because not, not for moral reasons, because I feel, my body feels healthier when I eat that way, but this is the modern age, and... We got to worry about costs. We got to worry about practicality. Yeah. We got to worry about realism. So a lot of times it makes more sense to break the rules of veganism. And that's why I say, give me the popcorn chicken. Right. Now, if you want to be on the show, you have concerns or whatever, we'll work with you because yeah. we just want you to come on and have fun. Right. This is a funny one because we literally talked about this sauce before. We no way. Oh, that's this amazing. This is the Dirty Dicks yes. hot pepper sauce. Um, <laughs> now I'm so glad that I didn't put it in my lineup because yeah. I was considering it. It's got a little special something something because it's made in Vermont. Oh. We both have ties to that area. So. Yes. But it's also got very good flavor. I had to play poker face earlier when we were talking about it. Like <laughs> you did a you very good job. About. Yeah. It's got habaneros, mangoes, pineapple. Of course, it's got your vinegar. 
banana, tomatoes, brown sugar. I This is one of my favorite sauces that I do have at home, and the banana and the brown sugar is really what characterizes it for me. We'll see what I think this time. It's actually been a while since I've tried it, so I, I don't even remember how spicy it is. Mm. Oh, God. Mm. So good. It's like a... It's like a dessert. <laughs> yeah. Dirty dick for dessert. <laughs> and then, the, as far as heat... This is more of a, a tongue heat. It's kind of on your tongue. It doesn't... Ri this one's not going to really put you over the edge, mm -hmm. but it'll get you where you want to go with, yeah. the, with the flavor profile. We're, we're edging the dirty dick with our tongue. If you say so. It's a nice, slow build. I don't think it's going to fry anybody's balls off. So, Tom, first race you ever attended, or should I say that I dragged you to, <laughs> was back in 2015. Yeah, I was um, wondering if this would come up. We were actually working on our previous project at the time, and... Dark like, Departure Movies on YouTube. And I said, Tom, there's this big race going on. I really want to go. Do you mind if we, you know, after we filmed, because we didn't film at night, because we, once once we lost light, we were done. So I'm like, we filmed, drag him out to the racetrack. I'm like, dude, we can drink beer. We literally, um, we <laughs> snuck like a, what was it, an 18 pack of Bud Light Lime into the racetrack. In a, bl and, like a, a cube shaped blanket. Yes, like, yes. hey, <laughs> hey, here's a ticket. And uh, I'm like, okay, have a good time. <laughs> that was uh, Tom's first e experience going to a racetrack. So I wanted to ask you, um, what were your expectations before we got there going <laughs> to the racetrack and how has your perception of the racing world changed since then? If, if ooh, see, ah, my expectation was that, uh, this is this is not an exaggeration, I thought Ryan was going to drive me out to the middle of nowhere where somebody had mowed kind of like a crop circle in a <laughs> cornfield and we were just going to be like standing there with with a bunch of yokels just like, Look at these sedans going in a circle. Oh boy, gee whiz, I never knew he was into this stuff. And New Smyrna Speedway is actually a really nice venue. At the time, they still had those turn one stands, so yep. that's where we sat. But I had a good time. I mean, granted, the beer had a lot to do with that, but I think your enthusiasm helped me a lot, uh, and, and your being able to narrate for me what was going yes. on. Go figure, this guy narrating the story of a race. Uh, but I, I think the main thing... Of course, there are so many things, but the main thing I can hone in on that's really enhanced my perception of the local racing scene, it's the people. The people who do love it so much that they pour everything they have into this hobby. It's a surprisingly hard thing to do in life to recognize what your passion is and figure out a way to live that. And even though I don't relate to the racing thing personally, the fact that racers and, and team members and whatnot have identified that in themselves and can put everything into doing that and, and you know, pedal to the metal on a Saturday night, let it all hang out, and wreckers or checkers, let's go. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what, uh, what I think is great about it. Oh, all boy. All right, Tom. Cross flags are out. Here comes the second sauce that I've curated. <laughs> that and, is uh, highlighter orange. Yes. This is the Hot Lap Caution Flag Scotch Bonnet Sauce. I went pepper shopping all over the damn county here trying to find some good peppers to make a different batch. It's just got Scotch Bonnet peppers, lemon, sugar, salt, vinegar. Okay. All of that blended okay. together. Might hit you a little bit differently. We might be ramping it up a little bit here. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, the same ingredients other than the pepper as the green flag? Pretty much, yep. Okay. I tried to as closely as I could um, since these are handmade and I'm sitting there scooping out measuring maybe a difference here and there but yeah same idea just different pepper the spice hits you quicker than any of the other ones it's nice though it's mm -hmm. nice though the okay you like the sweet there's a lot of sweet going on okay yep oh scotch bonnet mm -hmm. just said hello you know it, this is caution this isn't uh, <laughs> the end of the road here <laughs> so I think it's still pretty consumable yeah, like you said simple but sweet. I'm gonna go back for a little bit of this green flag too. Go ahead. After the caution. You've worked on slash made many short films in your lifetime here, including Scream Till Your Horse and of course, my favorite, Dark Departure 3. I might be a little bit biased there. Um, but what is your favorite film that you've worked on and tell us about it? Oh my gosh, well, we share it. It's Dark Departure 3. I wondered if it would be that or if you had things that you worked on back in the day that were more serious? No, honestly, most of the stuff I've made is crap. Like, I, like honestly, it really is. It's terrible. Um, you know, the, I, I have, I mean, honestly, I'm not even trying to be cocky. I have really great ideas, but they're way too ambitious. 
So the stuff that uh, the stuff that I've worked on, just like little student shorts, or there were two high school documentaries that I made. One of them didn't even get finished. And like Scream Until Your Horse was a swing at doing something a little more serious, and we actually got like at least one real actor to be in it, along with a bunch of locals. Uh, and it, you know, it didn't coalesce the way that we had hoped. But then you and I doing Dark Departure, and they 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 progressed from the first one. The first one was like we're just gonna film it over a weekend. We we had like two days to film the first. Yeah, one. and and that was and that was by design. We did it purely for fun. And you can tell when you watch it that it's just a run and gun. We're just having a good time. But I actually think we did a pretty darn good job with it. Yeah. But then Dark Departure three. I think we took everything we learned from the first two. Uh, yeah, we found we some really cool yeah. abandoned locations to film in. That whole uh, like 20 minute, 25 long, minute long action sequence toward the end where we're chasing each other and fighting each other, the locations are badass. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I love what we did with it, the, the design of it. We actually like reinvented our costumes from the ground up, uh, got new masks, new, new everything to wear, and I mean, we got real weapons in Dark Departure 2, we had plastic <laughs> weapons, and we were using real weapons. The funny thing about that, of course, is that once we started fighting, we were like, it's really dangerous to be fighting with a giant steak knife and a machete. I think that it works on its own, and I, I don't think I would have said this myself, but I'm regurgitating a compliment, I've heard about it now. We took archetypal characters and did something unexpected with them, and made people feel something about them by the end. And it's, it's all about yeah. feeling. You can do all the stunts that you want, but if you don't make anybody feel something, then you've done nothing. Right. You haven't captured anybody's imagination. And, you know, in that movie, you're wearing a Jason mask. I'm wearing a Michael Myers mask. But we're not Jason and Michael. Right, we're, right. We're just people wearing, and we, we make it become clear that we're just wearing those masks because that's what we have. I, I think so. Of, it so is kind of a, yeah, we it is kind of a... take the persona, but it's just us yeah. behind the mask. It is kind of a hard thing to describe. Although, you know, you, your Michael Myers mannerisms, again, not portraying Michael Myers, but embodying the mannerisms are so spot on. It's like when you're under that mask, it's just like, oh, if you, if you were a little bit bigger, yeah. I mean, my Good goodness. Play. And, you know, me, I wasn't even trying to be Jason. Like, the, I think the mask looks cool. I think I look cool in the movie. But, you know, I'm just... <laughs> I'm, I'm just, just running this around. Lumbering like, guy ready yeah. to get this little pip squeak. He keeps getting one up on you somehow. So, pretty popular brand of sauce, but I found one that's really going to ramp it up. This is Melinda's brand, but Jalokia. Ghost <laughs> pepper sauce. But, oh, okay. But is it, is that, it, that's the actual name of the ghost pepper. Is it boot? It's boot or butt, however you want to say it. <laughs> okay. But I like butt. So do I. <laughs> Why wouldn't you know it? So, this has the boot Jalokia or butt Jalokia mash, vinegar habanero mash, carrot, onion, lime juice. This is my favorite uh, sauce out of the Melinda's brand. Okay, the caution is still kicking here. Let's see. Mmm, mmm, oh my gosh. Immediately delicious. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like- Explosion. Mmm, this is exactly- Oh, and there's the- Yeah. Oh! It kicks. <laughs> Ooh, okay. You and I both like flavor forward, but when I'm looking for something that's just, like it's gonna taste good, sure, but I want heat, that's exactly the kind of sauce I go for. Yeah. This is, ooh, this is yummy, yummy. It's all, you get the flavor of the heat, it explodes at the same time. Yeah. The minute it touches your tongue, The fire is still spreading. Yes, it's yeah. doing the thing at this point. Yeah. I think you're gonna like this question, Tom. <laughs> okay. So you've got a very unique fashion sense, <laughs> as you can see. And I mean no offense by that, because no, no, you, you no. pull it off well. You know, I actually used to write for a fashion magazine. Oh. It's, maybe they shouldn't have let me do that. <laughs> But it is some of the proudest work of my life. I've heard people make little comments before. Uh, yeah, um, I, I, I have heard, like, who are you dressed as? Right. So, <laughs> some might describe it as, like, a biker meets an anime character. An anime character? Yes. Okay, interesting. So I could just see I could see you being in a cartoon, just, just like this. <laughs> so, with that said, um, describe your fashion choices and oh, the inspirations dear. behind your look. Oh, God, the inspirations behind my look. Is it a is it a too terrible of an answer to say that I don't put that much thought into it? I just could have fooled me. Oh well, there was that one time that I got that really shitty haircut, and for like a year and a half, oh I started God, wearing right. stuff on my I you know I started wearing the bandanas or whatever you want to call them. But then I liked how they kept the hair out of my face without putting on a ball cap. Mm. So I've just sort of continued to I don't even know what to call it, a bandana. Uh, usually, like if I can't find it around the house, I'll say, "Where's my head thing?" 
<laughs> I'm going back for seconds on this. This is Good. so this is so yummy. It's a great sauce. The one thing that I actually spend money on is my jeans. Okay. Because I I find value in that. If I like I'll I'll spend like over two hundred dollars on a pair of jeans. So are you brand loyal? Uh, I mean I I shop at the same store for okay. my jeans, and typically the brand I end up liking is is one of two. I have some Affliction, I have some Rock Revival, but I, I'm not gonna go around like, oh, I'm wearing my rocks. But I, I just like, I they're such good quality, they last for years and years, and if they, if something happens to them, you can bring them back to the store and get them tailored for free. That's where I put the value. And okay. and beyond that, I mean, it's just the the shirts that I like, the vests that I like. I wish I could describe it better than that. I, I admit, I do think it's kind of cool like when I'm walking around in public somewhere and somebody goes up and they're like, dude, you look like Brett Michael's brother. And there I'm you like, go. I mean, that's, I'm like, okay, that's yeah, that's kind of, yeah, like I, 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 I see that. So I, I can just remember, uh, you filmed a couple of quarter midget races a couple of years ago and one of the kids was like, that man looks scary. Up there. Oh, that's right. I remember there. that. But yet, you know, if, if somebody talks to you, you're one of the nicest, most patient people <laughs> that I know. I try. So obviously you, you have a look that might be intimidating to yeah. some, which might, you know, maybe maybe might make you unapproachable. But yeah. that's, that's what I wanted to ask. Like, <laughs> are you trying to be a certain way? Or is it just, this is what I like to wear. This is yeah. what looks cool. These are the shirts I like. These are the jeans I like. So I'm wearing it. You're just dressed as yeah. Tom. Yeah. yeah. Tom Stout. <laughs> you, you, you've got it. You're, you're the trendsetter. You, there's no inspiration. You're yeah. the inspiration. That's right. Everybody buy Bailey's shirt on WWE Shop. <laughs> so you okay. like that one, huh? Yeah, man. Oh, well, really good. I don't know what that reaction was. Good news and bad news. Mm -hmm. The white flag is out. Are you ready to taste the final sauce? Well, when you put it that way, I don't know. But I'm going to do it anyway. You've handled this well. This was my first introduction to Reaper and Scorpion Pepper. Oh. So we're, we're taking it from, like, you know, maybe a 7, and we're going up above 10 at this point. Yeah. I got this in a pack of sauces, didn't know what I was getting into. I put some on a thing, and I was like, what have I done? Mm -hmm. And then I did some research, and I realized what I had done was I uh, used too much. So <laughs> this is the Elijah's Extreme Regret Scorpion Reaper Sauce. All right. Flavor and heat. We like both, and I feel like this has both, and I hope you like it. It's got water, carrots, tomato, apple cider vinegar, a little bit of passion fruit, and I think the the special secret ingredient in this is the pure cane vinegar. I'm I'm going for it. I'm putting more than a dab on there because, like I said last time, this is the show. Let's do it. Let's not mess around. Does it got that smell, Ryan? <laughs> oh, it's got that smell. <laughs> cool at first. Mm-hmm. 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 It's getting angry at me a little bit. It's threatening me. I see some, I see some water up in the mice. Already. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got me by the collar, holding me against the wall. It's making some threats, but I'm still begging off. Yeah, you're right. There's there's some nice flavor there. Um, it's it's I, I feel like it's about to take me for a ride. It's not there yet, but I feel like the, the roller coaster is, you know, about to hit still that. Still going up. Yeah. Now that I've got you fired up mm. with your work, with Speedway Video, I know that you run into plenty of obstacles. Mm. Um, it seems like every night there's a new one that, that crops up. So um, what is the most frustrating part of bringing all your great videos to the people on Speedway Video? And what goes into an average night of editing? Oh my gosh. Well, you know, at different points, go figure, right before I started answering, that's when it really mm -hmm. started keying the ignition. Yep. Oh, right middle, okay, yeah. Right in the middle of trying to deliver the question is what it's in uh, the in the throat now. I, yep. I feel like I could breathe fire. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, at, at different points in the my goodness nine years that we've been Crazy, doing this. Right? Ooh. <laughs> okay. It's a good one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the answer would be different. At the very start, it took me all freaking week to edit the videos, and then I would put them on DVDs. But now with the YouTube thing, and recently upgrading my computer. Ooh. What I do now is I stay up all night. It's become valuable to me, or it is valuable to me, to post the videos as soon as I possibly can. Like you said, there are a lot of obstacles. It's really hard for me to narrow down exactly what the most frustrating of them is. But I think the main thing is that even though I'm the official videographer, I'm competing with people with phones. Everybody yep. in the pits and on the stands, everybody's got phones. Yep. And they're either live streaming 
or they're posting stuff immediately before I even have a chance to get home and make the first edit. You're still in the middle of race too. Yeah. yeah. And and I don't mind saying I think I do an excellent job of conveying the full story of a race from a better perspective than anybody else gets. So I I, I would like if people waited to watch my video and watch it on the official YouTube platform so I can get the ad revenue from the clicks and everything. Sure. So that's why it's valuable for me to turn it around as quickly as possible. So I stay up all night and then as soon as I'm able to hit export on the editor, I'll go to sleep and set an alarm so I can wake up and put it on YouTube and then set an alarm so I can go to sleep and you know, wake up and make sure that it doesn't have any copyright claims on it or anything. If there are, that's another alarm, or I'm up and drinking coffee. So it sounds like one of your biggest obstacles is, like, sleeping. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, every, like, it's it's calming down on me, but every time I swallow, it's just, like, re-burning. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's just, I know people have their own videos that they post, and they're totally free to do that. I, I really, I really don't like when people screen capture my videos and share them because even though my logo's in the corner and they're it's like the intention is there yeah ev uh, everybody they're fans of the brand they have their their hearts in the right place but they're they're stealing the video to say hey thanks speedway video look at this clip and then everybody looks at it on their facebook account for free it's free on youtube but you know i'm not getting anything from right there's no from kickback that. on facebook the, the brand is not big enough that that equals exposure for me. The videos are, it's, it's such a gold mine, it's such a godsend, uh, you know, for me to go back and review certain situations before I go talking about it. Oh yeah, um, yeah, it's a good archive. It, great it archive, great entertainment. You know, I can't tell you how many times late at night you just throw the videos on. Now that you have crossed the finish line, go ahead and do a burnout, give a shout out, uh, and, and thank everybody you need to thank. Yeah, well thank you, I, it's, I'm gonna keep it real simple. I'm thanking the Speedway Video patrons, and I worry that I say that too much and devalue it, but I often feel like I don't say it enough. Like, I appreciate you guys so much. Anybody you see on that patrons graphic at the beginning of every single feature race, uh, it, it is, it's still, it's still kicking. Yes. You know, you guys really are what keeps it going. Yeah, I get a little bit of pay from the track, but it's underline, it's a little bit, and I've had to fight for what little bit it is. Uh, it's, it's tough. I, I know, you know, anybody behind the wheel of a race car knows about losing money at the racetrack, and this is my job. It's not my hobby, this is my job and it's so hard to stay in the black with it. It's so hard to keep your head above water with it. So I mean it every time I say it. The Speedway Video patrons signed up at patreon.com slash speedway video. Uh, it's, it's, you guys really are what keeps Speedway Video coming out to the tracks and providing this content for you. So if you value it, I value you keeping it going. So I, I, it, I, I really do mean that. Watch those videos on Speedway Video, sign up for the Patreon, Support my man Tom over here so we can keep bringing those great racing videos from New Smyrna, wherever else we can get to. We keep delivering some uh, fun, different style content here with the Do a Burnout Challenge. Here, let me try to get a thumbnail face real quick. <laughs> Do the face again. <laughs>